In this video, we're going to be adjusting a parking brake or handbrake or e-brake, whatever you want to call it. It's this little device here. You use your hand to stop the car. You can see this one has lots of play. I'm barely using any force. And if I set it in this position, the car can still drive on it. So something needs adjusting, whether that's a nut in here where we adjust the cable or something more serious in the uh, rear end of the car. We're going to check that out now. So how does an e-brake work? What's it actually do? Typically, it stops the rear wheels on pretty much, you know, most vehicles out there. And what it does, it's like a brake cable on a bicycle. So here it is coming in here into the brake hardware at the bottom here. And what happens on this rear drum brake here is when you apply the brakes normally, not the e-brake, but the foot brake, these shoes here on each side come out like this and contact the drum which lives around here, which is this right here and the friction of these brake shoes here on the drum itself causes the vehicle to slow down in combination with also the front caliper brakes there. Now the e-brake itself, which is this line right here, ties into these shoes here on a drum brake system. So when you pull the parking brake, whether it's a foot pedal or a hand sort of brake there, the shoes will come out here as it's tied into the system underneath here. It uses a spring here and attaches to these exact same shoes here, which causes the same sort of thing to happen. Now what can happen over time, especially if you don't use it at all, it can actually seize and rust in you know wet environments and things like that. Or if you're in situations where you're always using it, the cable can actually stretch inside. You can see there, it's only a little steel cable here. And what can happen is the line gets stretched and it needs adjusting. So that's what we're sort of looking at in this video here. So what most people will tell you, or budget mechanics, or really horrible YouTube videos, is to just take off this sleeve here and adjust a nut here. That will shorten the e-brake cable, allowing this to work properly. However, what if there's something more serious going on? Say that your um, pads in the rear of your car have no pad on them anymore. It's just steel on steel. Adjusting this, yeah, it's going to stop the car, but you might hear a squeak because you have no pads or there's something more serious going on. So let's do this job properly and look at exactly how this works, you know, um, what it does and uh, other things we can consider as well. So why do we need to adjust this parking brake? Why did it become loose? Is the cable just naturally stretched over time? Or is there something wrong with our rear brake hardware? Let's check it out. So what we're going to do now is a quick test. I've raised the rear of the vehicle on jack stands. So both back wheels are off the floor. And what I'm going to do is try and determine whether one, the parking brake is actually working. Two, to try and isolate if the parking brake is only working on one side of the car and three, how well it's actually working. So with both wheels in the air, if you grab this wheel with both hands, with the parking brake engaged in a perfect world, and the idea is, it's not gonna budge. It's gonna be absolutely locked in place. You know, you have a working parking brake. So with our test here, we're gonna see how much it moves and how well it moves and compare driver to passenger side. So we're going to take the driver's side and try and move it with our hands. The wheel's on so we get more leverage. And you can see there is movement there. Not much, it's actually quite hard to pull, but we can do it by hand, which is quite bad really. Coming over to the passenger side now, it's a similar deal. It's not working that well, but we can move it by hand and we're using the same amount of force. So what this tells us is both wheels are kind of the same. It's a good indication, you know, the cable may be just a little stretched and we need to sort of fix it. However, if your driver's side is like this, but your passenger side one is stiff, we could isolate the problem between the two sides. We could say something is quite up with the uh, driver's side, you know, why is it so loose? with the parking brake applied and why is the passenger one behaving normal in this case it could be a seized handbrake line or something very specific to the driver's side so this is a quick good quick test to do 
if both sides spin freely, we could say the parking brake's not really engaging at all. Maybe it's stretched, maybe it's seized on both sides. We just really don't know without digging into the rear brake system. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you different rear brake systems on different vehicles so you can see how they're all kind of different, like drum brakes, caliper brakes and whatnot. But with regards to the handbrake and how it ties into the rear brake system, you'll see it's very similar in the way that works. So here's our first example drum brake system. It's a rear caliper brake system, but it, when the handbrake is tied in, it actually uses rear brake shoes to stop the vehicle, and they're inside this extrusion here. If you look behind here, you can see the handbrake line here. Just again, like a bicycle cable comes in, you can see that familiar spring there, and that's how the uh, you know it ties into the system there. It uses shoes to stop the brake rotor. So when we take this rear brake rotor off there, you can see the shoes I was talking about there. And if we follow the handbrake cable, we can see how that ties into these shoes and how they work. So what we want to do here, we want to go in the vehicle, apply the handbrake and actually see if it's actually working and making contact with this brake rotor right here. And this is the inside area where they make contact. So it's just a case of like investigating, you know, seeing if it's seized, seeing if it's working and making any necessary adjustments. You might just find your brake shoes are worn in this case. And yeah, it's just the case of following the handbrake cable in there and checking to make sure it's working properly. And here's an example of a rear brake caliper system where the handbrake cable comes in here and it actually interfaces with the brake pads and brake caliper system itself. So again, just like the other one, it uses a brake rotor, but instead it interfaces with the brake pad, so there's no brake shoes on this system. And again, you see that familiar spring-ended cable there, which is the handbrake. So we want to check, you know, that moves freely when we apply the parking brake. And, you know, it's just working correctly. Uh, it could be your pads are worn if your brakes aren't working, or it could be something else. It could just be a seized cable or, you know, some of the hardware. But this is how it works. It just clamps on the brake rotor just like your brakes do. If you want to learn more about drum brakes, I'll link a video in the description below where you can work out what all these components mean, how they work, and everything like that. So I recommend you check that out. So if you watch my video on drum brakes, you'll know about self-adjusters, or even adjusters, which is this little cog right here. You can see this cog here sits on this little rod here, and it allows, what it allows is over time these pads are going to wear. You can see there's around, I don't know, a quarter, maybe a third of an inch of padding here. So over time that pad's going to wear. And the thing is, you want these to still hit the drum in order to slow down the car. So as this wears, what this adjuster does here is naturally sort of rotates. And it only goes in one direction here, it sits on this L here. And so as these wear, the adjustment brings them out to compensate for the wear on the pads. And that's sort of how the adjuster works. Now, if there's something wrong with this adjuster, we need to really clean it out with brake parts cleaner and get it working again. It could be that the self-adjuster here isn't actually adjusting our brake shoes on a rear um, drum brake setup. And when that happens is your front brakes are working fine, for example, the front caliper brakes there and they're stopping your vehicle, but the rear ones aren't actually engaging at all. It could be a stuck adjuster for something like that. It could be worn shoes, lots of reasons, but that is also something to check. In this instance, it could be gummed up and you just need some brake parts cleaner, take off all these pieces, spray it all down. It's really just a screw inside of a sleeve there's not much going on with this it's all mechanical in that sense so that's something that could be the reason why your parking brake needs adjusting one last thing I'll leave you with if you really don't want to get up inside here and your handbrakes loose one thing you could try is if you do have a self-adjuster you can actually reverse the vehicle say go around 15 20 miles an hour and just slam on the uh, well not slam but press firmly on the brake pedal and that can actually pop this self adjuster and adjust it for you do that maybe three to five times or something like that and you might actually find your parking brake be a lot more firmer because it just turns out these weren't making good contract with the drum itself so just like that if you do that a couple of times, you might find the self-adjusters sort of um, adjust and you might actually find your parking brake is a lot more firm. So that's something you can try as well. 
So if you've looked at your rear brakes, everything, you know, checks out and, you know, you've done some of those tests I've recommended in the earlier parts of the video, chances are the cable is probably stretched. You know, it's a natural thing that just happens, especially when overusing it. And again, if you don't really know the history of the parking brake or anything like that, you don't really use it much, then, you know, don't just come to this adjustment screw and adjust it because, you know, you can create more problems and you're sort of failing to realize the importance of this video, which is, you know, maintaining the parking brake and make sure it works and it's safe. So to adjust the parking brake, it depends on year, make and model of car. They're located here, it could be under the car, it could be near the brakes themselves. It really depends, it's something you should just look up for your year, make and model. It'll be in the service manual or you can Google it. I'm going to show you now on a 2007 Saturn View all-wheel drive how to adjust the parking brake on here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to engage the parking brake so it's in the air. And then we're going to move the seat all the way back so we can get as much access as possible. By moving the fabric down on the seat, you'll reveal a T15 torque screw, which you can unscrew, and that will be holding the sleeve of the parking brake on. And what you can use to undo that is something like this, or like a little torque socket set. Both of them really work. Uh, you have enough um, room to undo it, it's not a problem. So now the nuts are removed, we can just come down here. You see this little plastic panel? This plastic panel right here, we're just going to move it towards the passenger side, just like that, and then we can grab this and pull upwards. And we're going to do this at the same time as just moving this out of the way of the bottom there. Then it should just come off like a sheath. So that you can see it just slips to the side of it there and out of its way. So if we come down here, we can move this kind of dust and debris guard out of the way. We don't really need to remove it uh, per se because uh, it's got a couple little plastic nubs on there and they can be prone to snapping, you know, there's not much room to get this out. So we could just push it out of the way and then we can sneak an extension down there um, with a 10 millimeter deep socket on the end and that will allow us to, you know, turn the adjustment nut for the parking brake. And when we adjust this, we want to go right to make it tighter, so that means it's harder to pull up. That will, in, you know, in essence, shorten the cable, or left for exactly the opposite. It might be the case if you only need to do it one or two turns, uh, full rotations. It's not much of an adjustment. Again, it depends how uh, loose your parking brake is and, you know, your circumstances. So this seems pretty adjusted now. I think that's a good amount. We're going to put the sleeve back on. On the sleeve, uh, this part actually pulls out of this kind of lamb chop shaped uh, plastic piece. And the holes must uh, line up as well so you can actually get the bolt through. Otherwise this bit will disconnect from the rest. So uh, just a little tip there when we're putting this back on. So now we've put the sleeve back on, you can just manipulate the plastic and pull it up and over there. Then you can you know, put it back where it came from and whatnot. And then we just put our little uh, T15 Torx nut back in there. We're good to go. Just give it one little final test so it, you know, it doesn't fly off. Make sure the nut's in properly. And that's it. All done. Now I'll show you how to do it on a Prius real quick that has a foot pedal and the same, you know, the same principle applies. And this is a 2007 Toyota Prius where the emergency brake is actually a foot pedal. And again, similar principle applies. There's just a little uh, adjustment nut up here, uh, right there in the top of the shot there. So it's just a matter of turning that nut there. Very similar. So I hope this video helped you. Again, um, you know, it's important when you don't know the history of the parking brake, how we can actually inspect to make sure there's no problems, things aren't seized. So really the aim of the video was to maintain the handbrake system and sort of learn about the handbrake system as well, which hopefully we covered for you, you know, by looking at different rear braking systems in the video as well. So hope this video helped you. Uh, like and subscribe if it helped. And thank you for watching.